This gospel from John chapter 9 was chosen specifically by the church for this Sunday in order to prepare those who are getting ready to enter the church, especially those who are preparing to be baptized into the church. Uh, we have uh, one of those here with us today, so Kenneth, who is up here in the front. We're going to be praying for him in just a moment. So this gospel is given specifically to help those who are preparing for conversion, but what it's like and what to expect. However, it's not just for them, but for all of us, since becoming more like our Lord is a continual process of conversion. The Lord is calling us to become ever more like him all the time. So what does this look like when you're going through the conversion process? And what can you expect? So like the blind man, you allowed yourself to be encountered by the Lord. And maybe it was kind of strange at first, maybe it's a little bit awkward, intimate in a way, and your eyes have been opened. This is what happens during the conversion process. You know, think about this man, this blind man. He wasn't asking to be healed. He was a blind beggar there, and our Lord was going by. The disciples began talking about him, having this conversation about him. And then our Lord turns to him, and he begins talking to the blind man, surely, telling him what he's going to do. And then he, and the blind man seems to be receptive, right? So the Lord uh, spits takes some saliva, spits on the ground, and, and bends over and kind of picks it up, mixed with the mud there, and makes this, this clay paste, or this, this salve. Uh, you know, the word salve, this is also related to the word salvation. And he anoints, the gospel uses the word anoints his eyes. This is the foreshadowing of the sacraments. So when someone is preparing to be baptized into the church, Oftentimes, they receive first the oil of catechumens, preparing them for baptism. And then, the Lord tells the man to go to this pool, of Siloam, and to wash. Another foreshadowing of baptism, the sacrament of baptism. And so that's what this man does. He goes to this pool, he washes, and he comes back seeing. It might be kind of awkward at first, you know, to kind of, this, here's this guy telling, you know, rubbing mud on your face, on your eyelids. You know, that's probably the most sensitive area of your face, this, this thin little skin. Yeah, in spite of this awkwardness, the man was open to it and receptive. And he tells the guy to go and get in this pool of water, and, and he does it. So he responds well to the Lord, in spite of the awkwardness, in spite of the strangeness of this request. This is very similar to what you go through when you're experiencing the conversion process. The Lord encounters you. It might have been through a friend who brings this up to you, a conversation. Maybe it was through a book that you read or through a video that you watched online that someone had produced and put there for you to find. The Lord encounters you in some way. And then as you go through the conversion process, and maybe it's not quite comfortable at first, it can be a little bit awkward. You maybe are you're asked uh, to come forward in front of everybody and get prayed over as preparing to be baptized at Easter. Or maybe if you're already baptized, you are asked to go and participate in the sacrament of confession prior to coming into the church. It's going to feel maybe a little bit strange, a little bit awkward, right? Very intimate, though. Our Lord is at work in this. He's preparing you through this. And maybe this unexpected way. You know, things happening to you during the conversion process might not be expected by the person going through the conversion process. But in reality, this is very common. And you think about St. Paul when he was being converted. The Lord threw him to the ground in front of everybody. Probably a little embarrassing, maybe a little awkward. Or think about St. Peter when he was going through the conversion process. The Lord called him the devil at one point. A little awkward, right? We call the devil by the Lord. Uh, but these things happen. So it's a little bit maybe strained. It doesn't quite feel too comfortable going through this process. And yet... In the midst of this, you know, this man's eyes are opened. Your eyes are opened to the beauty of the gospel, the grandeur of the kingdom of God and how it's set up so beautifully, the moral teaching of the church. Yeah, it's awkward, not quite expected, but it's good. You can see your eyes are opened. 
However, that's just the beginning. When you're going through the conversion process, people often experience difficulties, challenges. And when that happens, what do you do? Where do you turn? That's when the Lord encounters you again and more fully reveals himself to you and invites you to respond. Now, this is what happened to this blind man, this blind man that was healed. You, know, you would think, he probably thought, surely, that, listen, I've been blind my entire life, and here it is, I can see. My eyes are opened. He was super excited, full of joy, and he expected the people that he knew, people who knew him, to be just as joyful, just as excited. But that's not what happened. The townspeople who had seen him every day weren't quite sure how to take him, what to believe. Is this really the guy? Are you sure this is, this is the guy that we've seen blind begging every day? They got on a disagreement about it and they don't know what to do. And so they take him to the synagogue officials. And the synagogue officials get in an argument about the guy. They don't quite know what to do with this guy. How is this possible that, he could be, that someone could be healed? that a, a medical procedure could be done on the Sabbath. That's against the Sabbath. You know, this, this can't be right. This, let's, let's bring in his parents. And so they bring in his parents. Now, you would think that of all people, your family during the conversion process would be those that would support you during this time. And yet that's not what happens. In often, in many situations, with this blind man that, that's now healed, his parents, they're afraid that if they say the wrong thing, they're going to get kicked out of the synagogue. And so they don't really stand up for him. They kind of, they're, they're afraid. They're very cowardly in the way that they respond. And so these synagogue officials, they end up reviling this healed man. That means criticizing him abusively. Then they kick him out of the synagogue. You know, when you're going through the conversion process, it can be painful. You might experience rejection by family, by friends. You might even experience some painful things from other people in the church. People you would expect to be joyful at this, this, this eye-opening experience, this conversion that you're having. And yet this is not uncommon. This happens to many people in these difficult times. Remember St. Paul, when he went through the conversion process? The church, most Christians, were not particularly receptive of him. They were afraid of him. They'd heard about the persecutions that he'd done. And then when he went and preached the gospel, he went to his to the Jewish people, the people he knew best, his family, to the synagogues. And they rejected him again and again and again. This was his experience of conversion, which is why he began preaching to the Gentiles, to the non-Jewish people. You know, St. Ignatius of Loyola talks about a similar experience being very painful, hard and difficult uh, during the time when he was going through the conversion process. When you're converting, it's painful at times from family, from friends, even from people in the church. It's not what you expect. It's a joyful thing. Your eyes are opening. And yet, this is a very common experience, a painful experience. So when you encounter these difficulties, where do you turn? What do you do? Allow the Lord to find you again. Allow Him to encounter you. This is a time of growth in your faith. He is going to be the one that gets you through. You know that blind man, he didn't, he was confused. This is a joyful, exciting thing that happened to him, but nobody quite got what he was going through. The village people, his family, uh, the religious people of the day. And there he is, confused, doesn't know where to turn. And it's the Lord who finds him there and begins to talk to him begins to more fully reveal himself to this blind man that was healed. And the blind man responds, the blind healed man responds beautifully. He says, Lord, I believe. And then he worships him. So when you're going through difficulties, when you're being attacked maybe in, in very painful ways, remember that the Lord is there. He wants to encounter you he wants to touch your heart, to deepen your faith, to allow you to experience the fullness of the faith. St. Paul, uh, after his conversion, he spent three years over in Arabia, simply being with the Lord, allowing the Lord to encounter him, to mold him, to change him, to prepare him 
Three years. Just like 12 disciples have spent three years with our Lord. This is what St. Paul did. Uh, St. Ignatius talks about, you know, I mentioned this before, another homily going to a cave and just getting alone, allowing the Lord to encounter him there, to touch his heart. I'm no saint, uh, but there was a time in my life, uh, a conversion that I was going through, that was very painful for me. So I was discerning to be ordained for a different diocese, to be ordained as a Catholic priest. I'd moved across the country to be a part of this diocese and had gone through years of formation and was told uh, toward the end of that time, no, we don't want you. We're, we're not going to ordain you. I remember being very painful. Uh, I, was, I was being you know, treated in a, in, a, in a painful way and I, just, I didn't know what to do. And it was then that the Lord encountered me that he touched my heart, uh, that, that he got me through that time. I perhaps didn't know, but he knew that I needed to go through that humbling experience. So as you're converting, it can be very painful, but remember that the Lord is there. He wants to encounter you, to touch your hearts, that you can find your trust in Him, that you can grow in your faith, that He is the one who's going to get you through. So whether you knew, you're newly converting, coming into the church in some way, maybe even being baptized, or you've been part of the church, you've been Catholic for many, many years, and the Lord is still working on you, still converting you, making you ever more in his image. Remember to allow him to continue to uh, anoint you with his goodness, to wash you clean, making you ever more in his image. Even if it's kind of awkward and, and not quite expected. Uh, and as you're going through this time and seeing ever more lights, you think that others would rejoice in you and then they reject you and revile you. During that time, Allow the Lord to find you, to encounter you, to help you to grow in your faith. You may put your trust in Him, that you may worship Him, that God may be glorified. Amen.